So as you're aware, since you clicked on this video, today we are going to be basically continuing on from a slap chop paint job, um, which is this guy right here. Um, I dry brushed him, I primed him black, zenithaled him with white, and then dry brushed him, and then slapped some contrast and speed paint all over him. Um, and so now we're gonna take him up a notch, but without edge highlighting. Um, edge highlighting is a great technique used by a lot of good painters, but if you're, you know, I'm gonna say cutting corners, I don't mean that in a bad way. I love slap chop myself, uh, use it all the time. But if you're cutting that corner, if you're doing slap chop to quickly finish models or an army or whatever, if that's just how you prefer to paint, it then seems silly to go back and have to edge highlight things. Edge highlighting is a very involved and delicate process. And so today I'm gonna to try to take this guy up a notch from just basic slap chop um, without having to edge highlight. So we're gonna start off with Druki Violet here. Um, the main armor color here is Flesh Terror Red. Um, a note, if you wanna see the full process of getting from primer to this guy. Um, I'll link that up in the corner there. Um, there's no commentary on that. I was just going, you know, getting to this point so that I can do this video. Um, so like I said, we're gonna start with Druki Violet. And this purple is going to act as a universal shade, more or less, for the whole model. And so what exactly do I mean when I say universal shade? So um, normally, perhaps, when you paint, you might, you know, say you, you paint, you're painting something red. You will have a dark red, a mid-tone red, and a light red for a highlight. And then if you're painting something blue on that model, you'll have a dark blue, and then a medium blue, and then a light blue as a highlight. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you don't want to do it that way, and if you want to speed things up, what you might consider is a universal highlight. And so that is going to be what this purple is. And so that is a high or a universal shadow, I should say. We'll get to universal highlight. Universal shadow. So that's going to be, we're going to put this in all the recesses and all the places where it would be shadowy. Um, not, you know, I'm not switching to a, a darker bone color and a darker gold color and darker red color. I'm just using this um, Druki Violet to be the shade for everything. And that will not only help deepen the slap chop effect, but it will also help sort of tie everything together, make it seem like this guy exists, you know, is existing in a consistent light environment and things like that. So I'm just going in and just everywhere where you'd expect a shadow to be, I'm just deepening it up with this Druki Violet. And because this guy has this sort of, you know, muscle armor, um, I'm completely coating over the red with this Druki Violet to get into all those little recesses that are on the on the uh, the muscle armor, if that is what it's intended to be. That's what it looks like to me, so. Just going in and darkening up the skull there, and I'm gonna go in just between the skulls here and darken up just a little bit with this purple. And, you know, this purple is not quite going to actually turn things purple. It's mostly just gonna make them a little bit darker, but it will still give a hint of purple. And uh, since our main color is red, that's what I went with. If, you know, if my main color had been blue, I might have gone with a, a deep green or a deep blue um, for this shadow, um, or maybe even just a, a very muted gray. Um, you really just kind of have to experiment and see what looks good. I know, for instance, that purple looks good with red, and so that's what I went with. So again, I'm just going in and darkening up any places that 
would be shadowed. And this is a much more forgiving technique than uh, than edge highlighting. Um, as you can see here, like if I just, you know, if I make a mistake and put my brush somewhere wrong, that doesn't look good. I can just wipe it right off and we're back to normal. Um, edge highlighting, you might be able to get it back off depending on how liquidy you're working with, how liquidy your paint is that you're working with, but this will come right off no problem. So I'm just going to keep working my way around the model. Putting this into all the nooks and crannies here. And then I'm going to go away and finish this and I'll come back and when we come back I'll have made sure that this purple is dry everywhere. And then we're going to go into some dry brushing. And with the same concept as this universal shade that we're doing, but instead of a universal shade or universal shadow, we're going to be doing a universal highlight. And we're going to cheat a little. Um, we're not actually going to do a universal shadow. Um, we're going to do, or a universal highlight rather. Terminology is hard, man. Um, we're going to do one shade of highlight on the wings and one shade of highlight on the rest of him. So, like I said, we're kind of playing playing loosey-goosey with the word universal today, but that's okay. You guys should hopefully still get the picture. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Um, I'm going to do pretty much everything. I'm going to get, get just under his eyes here and in this gold under his nose, in there on the blood drop, and on his hairline here. There we go. So yeah, I'll just finish this up, and then we will come back and do some universal highlighting. All right, we are back, and we're going to do some dry brushing to finish this guy out. Um, for this, I'm going to use, first of all, pale yellow uh, from... Pro Krill Monument Hobbies, and then White Blue from same thing. Uh, these, this company specifically is not important. Um, this is just what I have around. You just want a very, very pale yellow. Um, ice, ice yellow is what it's sort of commonly referred to sometimes. And then a very pale light blue. Um, pretty much any company you want makes it. And since we're dry brushing with it, it's not really all that important that it be some specific color. So I'm just going to get some of this out. And then the brush I'm using is a makeup brush from the Morph company, I guess. Uh, there's the, the brush number. You can find it. Uh, I got mine at Ulta. It was on sale for 50% off. I think it cost me $4 or something like that. I know you can get them from specialized hobby stores and hobby companies but i'll just go to the makeup company and spend a tenth of the price so i'm just going to load up my brush now with the uh, starting with the pale yellow the ice yellow and i'm sure you guys are familiar with how to dry brush but i'm just getting getting all of the very or most of the paint off and then i'll just test it on my own skin here there you can there you can see that's what we're going for so um we're not going to do an all over dry brush we're going to start at the top of the miniature and we're going to go down because um, we just want to kind of pop the the upward facing highlights so i'm just going to go very gently and do this and you should see it start to appear in a couple places and if we went too heavy with this in any spots. I think I need to get a little bit more off based on that axe there. If we ever if we went a little bit too heavy in any spots we could always come back and just put another thin layer of our contrast paint over the top of it. But I think this looks just fine. I'm gonna get back here. Try to get in there to the to the jump pack here and then do the same thing back here. There we 
we go. I'll probably definitely need to uh, to redo the blood drops here. They got they'll get a little more because they're protruding. They'll get a little more color than we necessarily want on them. But otherwise, that's uh that's looking pretty good. Like I said, I'll redo the the blood drops there. Let me get his feet actually a little bit more down there. There we go. So then we're going to go with the the white blue or pale blue, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm just going to, not even going to clean my brush off for one, because it doesn't really matter. Um, but for two, uh, the second you get this kind of brush wet, you're, you're done using it for a little while. Um, it's not going to be able to, you have to wait for it to completely dry back out. And, uh, that's not something you can do very quickly. Um, I'm also realizing this is the first time I'm using this paint, so I'm going to pop it open here. There we go. And let's try this again. So same thing. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of it out. And then go in with my dry brush and load up my bristles. And then get 99.9% .9 of the color back off the bristles. So you can do that in a bunch of different ways. I'm just going in circles on a paper towel. Um, I've heard that a paper towel is maybe not the best way to get a dry brush prepped. Uh, I don't remember what the reason for that was, but I have heard that before. But I'm living on the edge, I guess. So then we're going to start on the back of the wings. Uh, one, because they're more protruding and they're a little bit easier. But also, if we mess up the back, most people are going to see the front of the miniature, not the back. So it doesn't matter as much. So I'm just going to, once again, make sure most of the paint is off. And then we'll come in right here at the top. And just drag the bristles down. And we don't need to go crazy heavy. We just want... A little bit of this blue popping on the edge of these wings. I'm just going to go back and forth to build it up. Don't want to build it up too fast. And then we'll go on the other side. And there, actually, you can see the difference now between the two. And that's what you're going for. And so this is obviously much quicker. Uh, much easier than edge highlighting, which is what we're trying to avoid. I figure if we're, if we're doing a slap chop, we need to probably get a lot of models done quickly. So I don't have time to go through and edge highlight every one of those if I'm trying to go quickly. So I'll just dry brush and it'll be a lot simpler. So there's from the front. You can see the difference now if it'll focus. There's the dry brushed, and here's the non-dry brushed. So it really does make a difference, and as long as you're, you know, going carefully, going slowly, building up your, your layers of paint here, you can really get a nice effect. And there you go. I think maybe a little bit more over here. I think we'll call him done. Um, the only thing I will do after this, like I mentioned, is do the blood drops again. They caught a little too much of the dry brushing. Um, and then I will, you see on the edge of his hair here, he got a, he got like frosted tips or something. We don't want that. So I'll use the black contrast paint and go back over those. But otherwise, he'll be done. Um, I'm not basing this guy because I am painting this guy for a friend. Um... Connor, if you're watching, thank you very much. Um, and I don't remember how he bases his Blood Angels, so I'll leave that part to him. But thank you, everybody, for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one.